I've seen I've seen some statements by the electoral bonds commissions and other election officials, which which kind of leave you um, kind of dumbfounded and a bit of gas uh, that persons with COVID nineteen will not and cannot uh, vote. Uh, I, I think this kind of amounts to disenfranchisement of people. The, the, the reality is, if you know you're staging an election during the pandemic, it's quite obvious during the pandemic. It's quite obvious that you've got your virus. You would think that you would have made provisions to allow persons with COVID-19 to vote, whether that is uh, creating police stations at the isolation centers or creating some form of electronic or mailing uh, voting system. But no provisions were made, no alterations were made to the electoral law to provide for this. So what you've got is literally thousands of people that will possibly be disenfranchised. And that cannot be right in a democracy. We have to ensure that every vote counts, every vote matters. Whether it's during COVID or whether it's out of COVID, that's, the, that, that's how democracy operates. So I, I, it leaves me worried that these issues have not been addressed or there's been no clear planning on the part of government because the reality is electoral officials can't call the elections. The government called the elections. And if you're going to call the elections, you have to be ready. Not ready for your political party. Yes, that's important. But you have to put country first. And if you're putting country first, that means that you make all the provisions to ensure that the elections are fair, free, transparent, transparent, and that every single vote can come. Okay. You are a lecturer at the University of, yes. West, of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. um, you um, do lectures in, in law and legal systems. Uh, constitutional matters. Um, do any legal issues arise, or any any issues which might warrant um, the intervention of of the courts? I think I think that would that would be have to be a matter for individual electors who are disenfranchised. Um, you know, the advice would be to seek assistance from your lawyer, uh, and they can they can take the appropriate steps uh, according to the People's Representation Act and the Constitution. If you feel that your your right to being uh, your right to Vote is being denied, uh, and that's the that's the, the, the way that I would address that at least the initial stage. Okay, but well, I suppose I might be asking for some free legal <laughs> advice here. But do you think I, what, what I'm asking is do you think that such persons would have would have a case? I I, I you see this is the thing. Or is it just a matter of, you, of you, morality? You, and, and you the, 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 the two, there are two arguments here. There, there could be a, a legal case and there could be a, a, case, a legal case of merit to the fact that you're being disenfranchised because the reality is it's not like if COVID was sprung on us. The elections were called during uh, the COVID. Now, the other, the, other, um, the other argument could be one of moral justice and that you should not disenfranchise people in this manner. So there, there are particularly two streams or two sets of arguments that can be made here. Uh, any persons who feel that they've been disenfranchised, uh, I think the advice would be to, to seek the advice, uh, and then you can make a particular petition to the court, and they will take it from there.